It was a calm evening at home until the phone rang and changed everything. Marcus and I were having dinner, salmon and roasted potatoes I cooked, when his phone started buzzing. He looked at the screen and froze. Who's calling? I asked. It's Selena, he said with a serious look. Selena, his 19-year-old daughter from his troubled first marriage, whom he hadn't spoken to in years. My heart sank. This couldn't be good. Marcus answered the call, and I watched his face closely as he listened, his expression showing worry. After a short conversation, he hung up and let out a deep sigh. What did she want? I asked, preparing myself. She's coming to live with us. Her roommate kicked her out, so she's driving here tomorrow. I dropped my fork, suddenly losing my appetite. Here? How long? She didn't say, but it seems like she's planning to stay for a while, Marcus replied. Panic gripped me. We had worked so hard to create a stable life together. Both of us came from broken families filled with lies and betrayals. It took years of therapy and trust-building to heal those wounds. The last thing we needed was a troubled 19-year-old causing more chaos. Can't her mom take her? I suggested. Marcus shook his head. You know how bad things are between them since the divorce. Before I could protest further, we heard the front door open. Our 16-year-old son, Eli, came in from basketball practice, his sweaty hair damp. Hey, Mom, Dad, what's going on? He asked, sensing the tension in the room. Marcus managed a weary smile. We just heard from your sister, Selena. She's going to be staying with us for a while. Eli looked surprised. He knew little about Selena beyond the few difficult stories Marcus had shared over the years. Um, okay, Eli said cautiously. How long is she going to be here? We're not sure yet, Marcus admitted. A tense silence settled over the room, and I could sense the worry spinning through Ellie's mind. Selena's sudden arrival threatened the stability he cherished, but he was too compassionate to voice his concerns. I reached out and squeezed his hand reassuringly before turning to Marcus with determination. We need to establish clear rules, I insisted. No taking advantage or expecting a free ride. If she stays here, she has to find a job and contribute. Marcus agreed. You're right. I'll make sure she understands that when she gets here. As we tidied up after dinner, I couldn't shake the feeling that Selena's return wouldn't bring anything positive. The past has a way of resurfacing, no matter how tightly you try to seal it away. The next morning, I woke with a sense of unease. Today was the day Selena would arrive. Marcus had prepared the small guest room for her, though I doubted she'd be pleased with the cramped space. During breakfast, Marcus attempted to reassure Eli. Don't worry, I'm sure Selena has matured a lot since I last saw her. Let's try to make her feel welcome. Eli nodded, but his apprehension was clear. Around noon the sound of a car pulling up outside caught our attention. That must be her, Marcus announced. My heart raced as we approached the front door. A blonde girl emerged from a worn-out hatchback packed with clothes and boxes. She looked nothing like the withdrawn, skinny 13-year-old I remembered from years ago during the divorce hearings. She had grown tall and attractive, dressed in trendy clothes with skillfully applied makeup. However, her bright smile didn't seem to reach her eyes. Marcus greeted her with an awkward hug. Welcome home, Selena. Thanks, Daddy, she replied sweetly, though she hadn't made an effort to stay in touch since the divorce. It's great to see you again. Over the next hour, Selena brought in her belongings, stacking them in the small guest room. Despite the limited space, she refused Marcus at offers to help, sharply instructing him not to touch her things. So much for her growing up, I thought to myself. During dinner, Selena dominated the conversation, talking mostly about herself and subtly making jabs at me. I can't believe you're still working as a nurse, Lena. Wouldn't you rather do something more interesting? I held back my response. Nursing was my passion, but Selena clearly didn't respect it. When Eli shared his plans to apply for college scholarships, Selena scoffed. Good luck getting enough money to go to a decent school. Eli looked hurt. I knew how much effort he had put into maintaining his straight A's and excelling in sports. After dinner, I pulled Marcus aside. We need to establish some rules for Selena, I insisted. We can't tolerate this entitled behavior. He sighed. You're right. I'll talk to her. But in the following days, nothing changed. Selena continued to behave disrespectfully, refusing to find a job or help with anything around the house. My patience wore thin. Then came the breaking point. One evening after work, I returned home to find Selena gone and Eli sitting alone, looking pale. What's wrong? I asked him. My heart sank as Eli revealed what had happened. Selena had stolen his laptop and emptied his money jar, which held over $500 he had saved from his job. Eli looked devastated. Anger surged through me. That money represented years of Ellie's hard work and dedication. When Selena finally returned, I confronted her. Give back Ellie's money and his laptop right now, I demanded. She smirked dismissively. Or what? You'll kick me out. 
I wanted to react impulsively, but I knew violence wouldn't solve anything. Selena's toxic behavior was tearing apart our family, and I knew I had to protect us, even if it meant making a difficult decision about Marcus's daughter. Right then, I resolved that Selena had to leave. When Marcus arrived home, I wasted no time in telling him what Selena had done. She stole from her own brother after we welcomed her into our home. I want her out, Marcus. Today, I insisted firmly. Marcus looked torn. I know Selena's actions are unacceptable, but she's still my daughter. If we kick her out now, she'll have nowhere to go. So we just let her keep taking advantage of us, I exclaimed. She's manipulating you, Marcus. Can't you see that? Please give me a little more time to talk to her, Marcus pleaded. I believe with some clear boundaries, Selena can change. I sighed in frustration. Marcus's paternal instincts were clouding his judgment about Selena's behavior, but I knew I had to handle this delicately to avoid straining our marriage. Okay, I relented. One week. If Selena's behavior doesn't show significant improvement by then, she has to leave. Marcus reluctantly agreed to give Selena more time, hoping against hope that she would change. But my hopes were quickly dashed as Selena's behavior spiraled out of control over the next few days. She stayed out all night partying, slept until noon, and even helped herself to my jewelry, dismissing my demands for her to find a job with arrogant remarks about living rent-free. Things reached a breaking point one evening when I found her smoking on the couch. When I confronted her, she brazenly blew smoke in my face and defied me, claiming I had no authority over her. I felt sickened by Selena's manipulative behavior. She knew exactly how to push my buttons while putting on a sweet act for Marcus. But the final straw came when I received a call from my credit card company about a suspicious $2,000 charge at a luxury store in Leigh. It was clear Selena had used my card without permission, racking up more debt in a week than Eli and I spent on groceries in a month. When Marcus returned home, I couldn't contain my rage any longer. Your daughter is tearing us apart. I want her out of this house tonight, I demanded, trembling with anger. Marcus looked worn down. You're right. I wanted to believe Selena could change, but she's completely out of control. It's either her or me, Marcus, I stated firmly. Choose carefully. He pulled me into a comforting hug. You and Eli will always come first. I just hope we can get through this without tearing our family apart. We gathered with Selena, and Marcus firmly told her she had to leave immediately. She exploded in anger, hurling insults and accusations. I remained quiet, letting Marcus handle his distraught daughter. When Selena stormed off to pack, Marcus slumped in defeat. I'm so sorry I brought this chaos into our home, he lamented. You and Eli mean everything to me. No matter how long it takes, we'll feel from Selena's influence. I squeezed his hand, finding solace in his resolve. With unity, we would overcome this trial. Selena's destructive behavior wouldn't break our family. The weeks following Selena's departure were tense. Marcus attempted to reach out to her multiple times, but she refused to respond. I knew he wrestled with guilt, blaming himself for her actions. I reassured him we had made the right decision. Selena had wreaked havoc like a tornado. We changed the locks and dealt with the fallout from my stolen credit card thankfully resolved with the bank's support in reversing the fraudulent charges. Gradually, our lives returned to normalcy. My heart sank as I opened the letter, shattering the fragile piece we had started to rebuild. It was from a bank I didn't recognize, thanking me for opening a new credit account. Panic set in as I read through the attached paperwork. Someone had fraudulently applied for a $155,000 personal loan in my name, forging my signature, money that had already been deposited into an unknown account. The implications were staggering. This amount of debt could devastate our family, and there was only one person I suspected could do such a thing. When Marcus returned home, I thrust the letter into his hands. Your daughter is trying to ruin us. We need to call the police right away. His eyes widened in shock as he scanned the letter. My God, I knew Selena had issues, but identity theft? He sank into a chair, burying his face in his hands. This is all my fault. I failed her as a father. My anger towards Selena began to soften as I saw how deeply Marcus was affected by her betrayal. Sitting beside him, I placed a hand on his shoulder. You did everything you could for her in such difficult circumstances. Some people just refuse to change. Now we have to focus on protecting ourselves and Eli. Will you call the police to report the fraud? Marcus sighed heavily but nodded. You're right. I need to do the responsible thing, no matter how painful. We spent an agonizing hour on the phone with the police and the bank, filing reports about Selena's crime. It was surreal to think that the sweet girl I had seen in Marcus's wedding photos could turn into such a heartless criminal. The bank investigator informed us that the loan had been taken out locally, suggesting Selena was still nearby. The thought sent chills down my spine. That night, as we lay in bed, I turned to Marcus. We'll work with the bank to invalidate that loan. They believe we're the victims in this. 
I hope you're right, Marcus murmured, his voice heavy with worry, because if not, this could ruin us financially. We might even lose the house. The unspoken fear hung thick between us. Selena wasn't satisfied with just tarnishing her father's trust. She seemed determined to dismantle our entire family, no matter the cost. As I finally drifted off to sleep, I repeated a silent mantra. Selena's schemes couldn't touch us, no matter how hard she tried. Goodness and truth would prevail, but beneath the surface a cold anger simmered. If Selena continued to threaten my loved ones, I was prepared to do whatever it took to stop her. In the following weeks there was no word from Selena. The bank's investigation into the fraudulent loan bought us some time before any debts were due. Police attempts to locate her proved fruitless. Selena had vanished without a trace, leaving Marcus to calm through online records in a desperate search for clues. It was clear she knew how to evade capture, an adept manipulator and elusive figure. Then on a sunny Saturday, our world shifted once more. Marcus was away at a teaching conference for the weekend, so Eli and I decided to catch a movie together. But upon returning home, a sense of dread washed over me immediately. The front door stood open. Heart pounding, I hurried inside, Eli right beside me. Wait in the hall, I instructed Eli firmly. If Selena was inside, I wanted to shield him from any danger. Moving cautiously, I entered the dimly lit rooms. At first glance, nothing appeared out of place. Then I reached Ellie's bedroom. The sight was devastating. Drawers thrown open, mattress overturned, and the closet in disarray. Eli rushed in beside me, gasping in disbelief. That's when I noticed the paper on his bed, scrawled with a mocking message. College fund gone. Oops, better start bussing tables, loser brother. Anger surged through me, blurring my vision. The college fund Marcus and I had painstakingly saved for Ellie's future, nearly $20,000, was stolen. Selena had callously used it for her own needs while leaving hurtful insults for her brother, whom she had never bothered to know. I heard a choked sob from Ely, his face strained of color, tears welling in his eyes. All the money you saved up for me, gone. I hugged my kind, hard-working son, feeling heartbroken for him. We'll find a way through this, I promised, but inside, I was furious. That money was meant to help Eli have a better life, but Selena had taken it all away without any care. When Marcus came home, he was devastated by the break-in and Ellie's loss. My usually calm husband was furious, just like me. Our savings were gone, our home broken into, and our son hurt for no reason. It was too much. Selena needed to face consequences before she hurt more innocent people. The next evening, ignoring Marcus's warnings, I drove to the old motel where people said Selena was staying. I found her beat-up car parked outside. I knocked on her door until she opened it, smirking when she saw me. Well, if it isn't St. Lena, here to lecture me about morals. I slapped her hard across the face. You're a terrible person, I said angrily. Didn't ruining our lives once satisfy you? Selena's smirk disappeared. You'll pay for that, she snapped, trying to attack me. We struggled briefly before I pushed her back inside and slammed the door in her angry face. I walked away, shaking but determined. Today, Selena's reign of terror ended one way or another. I had given her chances to change, but some people are rotten to the core beyond redemption. Trying to save them risks dragging yourself down too. Selena had shown herself to be heartless and incapable of doing any good. Now it was time to cut her out of our lives for good before she could hurt us again. In the weeks that followed, I nervously waited for Selena's revenge. Marcus tightened security around our house. I kept Eli home from school, afraid to leave him alone until Selena was caught. But as time went on without any sign of her, we started to relax. Maybe she had realized she couldn't stay in town without facing consequences for what she'd done. Late one night, I woke up to blaring fire alarms. Marcus and I rushed to Ellie's room and found it filled with smoke, flames climbing up one wall. We grabbed Ely and hurried outside just before the fire consumed his bedroom. While firefighters put out the blaze, I couldn't shake the feeling that this was no accident. Selena had made a final desperate move for revenge. The police investigation confirmed my suspicions. Traces of gasoline had been found on one side of the house, deliberately set alight. It was a chilling realization that Selena had intended to destroy us as we slept, if not for our timely awakening. Marcus looked exhausted as he spoke to the investigators. Our daughter, Selena Rogers, is your prime suspect for arson. She's already committed identity theft and burglary against us. This fire was her latest attempt to harm my family. After discovering Selena was committing more serious crimes, the police finally took action. They got security camera footage showing someone in Selena's car leaving the area just before firefighters arrived. Arrest warrants were issued for Selena, and her name and photo were shown in the news as a dangerous criminal. Marcus even asked Selena to surrender, promising she'd get a fair trial. But Selena stayed hidden, leaving us stuck in uncertainty, fearing she might strike again.
I stayed indoors with Eli, keeping a rifle and fire extinguishers close by. She had already taken so much from us, I wouldn't let her take our peace of mind, too. Then one evening I got a surprise call from the detective leading the case, urgently telling me, you need to check the news now. They just caught Selena Rogers. I rushed Marcus and Eli to the TV, our hands shaking. The news showed Selena in handcuffs outside a pawn shop, stolen things from our house scattered around her, jewelry and electronics. She cursed and spat at reporters while police put her in a car. Selena had thought she couldn't be caught, but she slipped up and got caught red-handed. Reporters talked about Selena's shocking crimes against her own family. Her reputation was ruined, and everyone saw the real monster behind her pretty face. I almost felt sorry for her, almost. That night, with Selena locked up in our home safe, we finally slept peacefully. The coming weeks would be hard, cleaning up the mess Selena made, but the worst was over. Her lies couldn't hurt us anymore. A new day had come, full of hope and promise. In the weeks after Selena was arrested, life slowly returned to normal. With Selena facing serious charges in jail, the heaviness that had burdened our home began to lift. I took Ely out to celebrate his birthday at his favorite restaurants, and Marcus and I spent evenings reminiscing about happier times before Selena came into our lives. We started making plans to repair the fire damage and recover financially. But looming court dates brought anxiety. Marcus struggled with the thought of testifying against his own daughter, despite their strained relationship. I tried to stay strong, reminding myself of the pain Selena had caused us. Then came shocking news. Selena had been involved in a violent fight with another inmate in jail and had died as a result. Marcus was devastated. He withdrew into our room for days, grappling with guilt. Meanwhile, I focused on supporting Eli, who, despite everything, felt saddened by the loss of a sister he barely knew. In the following weeks, we learned disturbing details about Selena's final days. The inmate she fought with claimed Selena had boasted about how she enjoyed deceiving people and wished she had stolen even more from us. Hearing Selena's callous words only hardened my resolve. She had shown no remorse for the pain she caused. In the end, her own greed and aggression had led to her downfall. With Selena no longer around, her case quickly fell apart. The bank cancelled her fake loan applications, lifting that heavy debt off our shoulders. The police recovered some of our stolen money from her places. Meanwhile, our community rallied behind us once Selena's crimes came to light, offering sympathy and raising funds to help Eli with his college tuition. Their kindness overwhelmed me. After being trapped in Selena's lies and isolation, the support of true friends felt like escaping a nightmare. Marcus felt it too, we weren't alone, good people could stand against evil together. On the anniversary of Selena's passing, we visited her grave for the first and only time. Marcus knelt beside her simple gravestone, quietly saying a prayer. I stood with Eli, giving him space. She wasn't always like this, Eli said softly. Do you think if she had made different choices, she could have found happiness? I held my wise son close, embracing his insight. Everyone chooses their own path. Selena's led to destruction, but we're moving forward now, into the light. Marcus joined us, his demeanor finally calm. He took my hand with a gentle smile. Thank you for staying by my side, he said. Your love guided me through the darkness. Together we walked away from Selena's troubled legacy toward a future full of promise. In the months following Selena's passing, our family began to heal. We repaired the fire damage, recovered stolen money, and settled debts. Slowly we reclaimed what Selena had tried to take from us. Yet some wounds ran deeper. I woke from nightmares of fire consuming our home. Marcus withdrew into solitude, wrestling with guilt, while Eli grew more reserved, startled by every sound and keeping his door locked. That's when I suggested we start seeing a family counselor. Initially, Marcus hesitated, feeling ashamed about needing help. But eventually, he agreed that it was essential for us to heal fully. Our counseling sessions became a source of profound release. We discussed feelings of betrayal, violation, and anger. The counselor taught us techniques to manage anxiety and PTSD, encouraging us to express our emotions rather than keeping them inside, which had strained my relationship with Marcus, who tended to brood. Through these sessions, I discovered depths of pain in Marcus that I had not fully understood before. He confessed that part of his desperate attempts to help Selena stemmed from regret over his perceived failures as a father during his divorce. The counselor helped him see that his intentions were misguided rather than malicious, easing his sense of shame. For Ailey, the most comfort came from returning to normal routines. He rejoined school sports teams, volunteered at a homeless shelter, and started working part-time at an ice cream parlor. Focusing on these activities and engaging with the community helped him feel more empowered and less helpless. Six months later, with our counselor's blessing, we decided to put our troubles with Selena behind us. Using the last of the recovered money, we took a family trip to Hawaii. We enjoyed stunning beaches and delicious dinners, free from tension or drama, just cherishing our time together.
On our last night, Marcus and I renewed our vows on the beach at sunset, with Eli proudly officiating. Looking at my two incredible men, my heart swelled with love and pride. Selena had tried to tear us apart, but instead, we emerged stronger. While scars remain, we wear them proudly, refusing to let past pain define us. Our family embodies resilience. During the flight home, I wrote a journal entry reflecting on our journey, which I later shared with Marcus and Eli. The past year brought immense challenges but also profound growth. We've grown closer, our wounds turning into wisdom. Selena's actions reopened old wounds and inflicted new ones, but we've stitched ourselves together, becoming stronger. Our imperfect family doesn't just survive, we thrive. Darkness fades, healing begins, and the enduring light remains. Later that week, I stored my journal in a keepsake box. The last remnants of Selena's havoc, court documents, financial statements, police reports, were discarded. Marcus held me close, saying, it's finally over. Now we can build something beautiful from the ashes. I smiled at him and embraced Eli. The storm had passed. Ahead of us stretched a bright future, and together we would walk forward, facing the light.